chat, connected to chat. I'll go to the, uh, like, go to my main page. Mm -hmm. I think my mom just texted me I was live, so this might be working. All right. Maybe. Anybody? Yes! Okay. Uh, hello. Thank you, Mom. Good morning and evening, Vietnam, and everywhere else you are. Guys, I have had quite the journey of just getting alive going. This is, if nothing else, proof that I appreciate and love the fine, fine crew at Collider because I couldn't even turn on a computer, apparently. So I'm going to have people uh, move over from the other page to this one. I will then make this the main ongoing stream situation uh and i will make sure that i get all the news out from there that i want for here there were over a hundred people in the other chat and that was i can't even quantify what that means to me and the fact that i had to like speed download an obs which i didn't know what that was i had to figure out what an obs was and then get guys and ladies it has been a journey i would like to thank you as people come over from uh from live one to live two <laughs> uh hi so i i assume a lot of people are here now that we have found here to figure out what is going on with uh with me uh post heroes what may have gone on with all the madness of that and uh basically all of the goodness that we can do together now live three aj lancaster yes you're right this isn't even live two it is live three uh again you guys are so much more patient than me i i i'm the guy that goes to the dmv and looks at the line and goes is it worth it to get a ticket Maybe, because coy crimes sometimes start at the DMV level. Now, without an IT crew, uh, I am lost. Now, I want to talk to you guys uh, in the beginning about uh, my appreciation, because basically that is, is what I want to lead with, because at the end of the day, I, I got to do the coolest show for two years. Uh, I was looking at my, my year in review, and it was two years on the 8th that I was doing Heroes. Um, John brought me on January 8th, 2017, so I wanted to do uh, the two-year, basically, anniversary on the next episode, which, unfortunately, we can't, but uh, this is about the appreciation of those two years, because I, I guys, uh, I got to do Heroes for two years, and I am so flattered and proud, and I... Dude, are you guys wanting to send me money means everything because it is it is a absolute bummer um, the way things went down. Uh, but I want to I want to lead with like I said, Collider gave me an incredible opportunity for two years that I hope I did justice uh, and that I hope we all get to keep doing together because this to me is what it's about, right? Like I get to connect to you guys and there isn't a whiteboard of justice to tell me thirty minutes. There is not a whiteboard of justice to say twenty minutes. This can go on for absurdly long. Uh, short of basically, you know, I should live some, but I don't have to because there's comics to talk about. There's movies to talk about. There's so much to talk about. So this, I'm not even going to consider the first episode of the new wave. This is the announcement episode. This is the figure out what you guys want to see episode. This is sort it all out. Now, eventually, and by eventually, I mean probably, uh, you know, this week, I'm going to try to sort out a way to do a podcast uh, a YouTube and a Patreon. So the idea would be we do the Patreon for all the core stuff and then a couple days later release it on YouTube and then I'll release it all on a podcast. So I'm gonna kind of like multi-tier approach. Um, now I, now Massholes, if you're not like watching the game, if you left the Patriots game to come talk to me, Thank you so much. That is amazing. Um, I really appreciate you. I, I actually, the last time I saw it, it was, uh, it was apparently like 14, 13. It was, it was dire. So I had a hard time. So, uh, and thank you Garth for posting this into the Mercs, the Mounty Mercs. Uh, I am so excited for all the Schmodown goodness. Uh, and also thank you for not watching the Pats game. This is also like this live chat. It's going to be a whole thing. So I'm going to have to do one of those like those blocky i'm not monetized yet because uh i just started this youtube uh three days ago or i just reactivated it three days ago so the fact that i have over 2000 in this immediate viewership is absolutely incredible so thank you i just need to get 4,000 hours then i can make this monetized and then we can do the super chat and all that goodness but for now here we are oh it's not a better situation troy you're killing me 2013 Okay, we'll see. Now, this is why we can't have this during a Pats game, because I am frankly, uh, like, invested here, and that is not fair to here. So, 
the goal of this episode is I would love, love for you guys to tell me what you would want out of a Patreon. I've got a few ideas for basically, uh, you know, one, three, five, ten, twenty-five dollar tiers. Uh, I also, oh, the Patriots lost, said with exclamation points. So you're getting, this is like a trailer watch along, but just for a sad Pats fan. The Pats, we're not good at losing. Um, and, and the fans aren't either. Uh, so I can do super chats? Okay, I'm gonna get on StreamYard next. That is, now that I know YouTube's complicated, I'm gonna sort out all the details. I thought it was simpler. I'm sorry again for delaying you guys. Uh, now, first order of business, Collider. Two years of heroes, all appreciation. The next thing to figure out is basically I am uh, going to be doing comic book shopping and I am very, very honored to continue that show. Uh, it is it is vital to me to get comic books in people's hands. It is so important to me to figure out new and exciting ways to spread awareness and that show does have great opportunities to bring people into the world of comic books so that is something i absolutely want to do uh i i don't love uh the way this week has gone i don't love the way things have been handled and i don't tend to lean into negativity so i'm probably not going to talk about that all that much um i'm not still at collider in in the traditional sense like i don't know if i'll ever be back in that office i uh i will be at various comic book stores and you will find the footage um but i don't know what's up with me and them and i want every single one of the people there to have the best time perry is an absolute powerhouse host i have so much love for perry uh i love the behind the scenes people there i love the hosts there i just i i've worked with perry the most so i just want to say that i i absolutely wish the best of all of them and i don't necessarily think that like the downvoting helps or the the yelling helps or any of that stuff scott mance is like he's a, he's a, he's another version of me the man it's like beatles to hip-hop and and star trek to spider-man the dude is a lot of the same stuff uh as far as my zeal but it, it's been yeah it's it's been pretty crazy because i i didn't know any of this was going on until like i'm sure you guys have heard from roxy until very soon uh very close to when you guys all did and that was that was tricky so i i definitely don't don't know what's up but i do know comic book shopping will be continuing on and i do know that we want to do the best damn show i've got some cool ideas for guests gonna try to figure out all of that next uh the holidays it was like new year's just so it has still been a whirlwind uh now me, Amy, Roca doing a show. I would love to work with any of, of the fine folk over at Collider. Uh, I definitely want to do some stuff with Amy. Uh, scheduling is going to be uh, a, a whole thing. Dale, I am doing my own channel. This is the beginning of that channel. This is literally the beginning of that journey of my confusion. And I cannot imagine um, what it was like to try to jump around and see me on three different live chats and land here. So here we are. Um, I will probably make uh, the, the, the comic book shopping thing happen whenever it's appropriate for scheduling, depending on the talent, depending on the movies they're promoting. I don't know how consistent it'll be. I see that in the live chat a couple of times there. I think that's what they're asking. Um, and the Marvel thing with the Hulk. Thank you for asking. I did want to incorporate that. I don't know how credible of a rumor that is, and I generally never talked about rumors on Heroes uh, by necessity. Uh, I don't think that that's the way to do news. Um, but I do think when we have these long form podcasts, we can absolutely, uh, expand into some madness. So this Hulk rumor, while we're on the subject, uh, Universal, it would make sense for them to part ways with certain characters and Disney doesn't not have deep pockets. So I do think that that is an absolute opportunity. And I do think the timing makes this more of a credible rumor than others. Uh, I do think the She-Hulk show might have been able to put some pressure on a solo Hulk movie. And I do think that things are going to be announced soon. I, I have no I have no inside information, but but looking at the, the tea leaves, <laughs> I do think this is a very interesting timing. And I do think uh, it is more credible than a lot of rumors. Uh, now, I also think that Namor was included in that deal. I think we're going to find out in probably the next two months um, that it's going to be one of those negasonic teenage warhead for ego the living planet kind of deals i think there there's probably you know not for a trade of characters but we're going to find out a batch of stuff left universal uh disney bought it not in trade but in in profit and we will be getting those characters i think i have no idea uh i 
I didn't really leave Popcorn Talk. I just, uh, I didn't keep doing Marvel Movie News because it was not time conducive. I love them over there. Uh, Popcorn Talk is fantastic, but Collider lined up. Uh, I, I wanted to meet a new audience. I love the Popcorn Talk audience. I love the Collider audience, but I just wanted to try out a new playhouse. Uh, I love the Popcorn Talk people. I don't regret any of my time there or having left. Uh, they are fantastic. And you guys know Roxy. She's amazing. So that would be another whole thing. Uh, and I might pop back over there. Like, we did that Christmas special for three years, which I loved. Um, but I definitely want to kind of do my own thing. I can. I could go back to Popcorn Talk, but I want to do my own solo adventure. So maybe periodically, uh, maybe four specials. Maybe I have some ideas planned, but I don't think I'll be questing uh, to the location if I can do all this here. And I have been talking to certain ex Marvelites about some things. Uh, so, yeah, and, and what, what Garth is saying in there is part of the part of the thing uh that is part of the equation i want to do stuff uh directly with you guys without the third party that's the whole point is i can kind of say what i want here and i know you guys want comic book content and i think this is going to be largely comic book content but i also in the freedom of my own show can talk about movies i can talk about tv shows i can talk about uh what comedy specials i've enjoyed i can talk about books i can talk about what album i enjoyed and i want to get into some of that stuff now Speaking of those very, very specific things, did you guys check out my Instagram? Because on my Instagram, there is a post about the top six books that came out December 25th. Now, December 25th was Christmas, which is crazy that any comic books came out, and a lot of comic stores shipped them early, so it actually was a pretty good ship week, even though it was a limited amount. It was a hell of a lot of great books. So I want to bring up uh, which books those were. I think it was uh, Doctor Strange, uh, Surgeon Supreme, number one, was one of the ones I talked about. That book is an absolute love letter to the greatest hits of Doctor Strange. It is an incredible tight contained story it jumps off amazingly it gives you everything you want to know about dr strange the art is fantastic mark wade writes the hell out of dr strange it is it is a good time criminal number 11 is the ending of one saga in criminal but it's a cool jumping on point because you can retroactively tie it all together uh i really enjoyed where they went with criminal uh dude thank you incoming number one look at that i love my fans so much Garth. thank you i was going off memory and you got it right here for me incoming number one is the jumping off point for so much of what is going to be marvel next year now Marvel is only going to expand in their comic stuff. I think this Kevin Feige thing is actually going to give us a lot more creativity in certain characters because we might see see the planet in comics translate to movies. So I don't think incoming is an example of that, but I think the story type telling that's an incoming is really going to lend itself to where Marvel goes. It's going to be really fascinating. And if you haven't read incoming number one, it is full of spoilers, but the tone is amazing because it's a series of writers and a series of artists that all make this detective story. So uh, it's like three pages per character that lead into the next thing and the next thing. Uh, let's see. Uh, is my brand of liking everything in the name of positivity going to be prevalent throughout your channel? I'm looking for honest, objective criticism. Um, shit I don't like, I don't tend to think about again. Uh, if I actively don't like it, you might hear about it on the channel. Um, I, like say I read 40 comics a week. I'm going to talk about the 15 I like. Uh, maybe on my Patreon, I might, I might make a list of things that were meh or things I didn't enjoy. Like if there's a Patreon tier, that's me reviewing every comic. You'd obviously the ones I didn't like, but I'm not going to spend time, uh, shit talking the things I didn't enjoy, if that makes sense. So, um, honest opinions are welcome here, uh, but I'm not going to invest in shit talking. So if you're looking for like a negative review, like say, say a big movie comes out. Uh, if, if I was doing this when Dumbo came out, I'd have told you I didn't like Dumbo. I thought Dumbo was garbage. And I'm sorry to everyone that liked Dumbo. It just wasn't for me. So if it's a big movie, I might do a five-minute review on it. But I'm going to do a 20-minute review on how much I enjoyed uh, Honey Boy, for example. So I, I don't think I'm going to be leaning into ne negativity, but I don't think I'm going to avoid it as much as I did on my shorter shows. Because basically, uh, I have more time here. But I like good stuff. And I like investing my time in, in shit that's, that's positive and great. Because... Uh, we're all dying like rapidly, right? Like if time isn't real because we invented it, entropy is. So the moments I'm spending with you are important to me because this is an hour I'll never get again, right? Like this is my body and mind are decaying an hour. They're, they're, they're never coming back. And I want to spend that in a good hour. I want to spend that uh, hyper positive and I want to spend that relishing in this goodness. You can go to Rotten Tomatoes for people bitching. You can go to YouTube. Certainly you're on it. Uh, you can go to any number of websites that like talking shit, but I'm going to stay uh, positive for me. 
Unless, like I said, it's something I, I feel needs to be spoken out about. Like, why is Armageddon on Criterion? Uh, that's, that's another episode. We'll get there. We'll get there. But back to comic books. Incoming, number one, great detective story, great cast, incredible writing, incredible art. I love the hell of it. My indie pull of the week is Kill Lock. Now, Kill Lock number one is from a writer, artist, like it's one guy. He's the writer and artist that's been working on Transformers. His name slips my mind because I had a lot of frazzling with uh, getting this set up, but I will look him up. I'll put him in the comments. He's been working on Transformers and this is his six issue miniseries baby. It is a dystopian future insanity with robots that you instantly feel for the characters are so likable and there's not a single human being in the first issue of the story you're with this character set that are, are inhuman but they feel so familiar and their character uh is so immediate and the art just ties itself so beautifully to this ominous tone and this incredible new story it's by idw it's one of the first idw books i have praised this loudly in a long time it is an incredible book kill lock number one is very very special uh now i also think that what else was this week uh let's see anybody on my instagram i i am enjoying the fact that i can ask you guys and this is so much fun to directly relate uh what else is on there after kill lock because i i put six on there that i think are must reads oh venom uh venom number 21 donny cates mark badley uh bad, 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 bad. mark bagley and donny cates donny cates has been writing so much greatness at marvel and i am absolutely about him continuing his venom run i never thought a remove from spider-man venom would work in movies much less comics but short of absolute carnage it's been mostly separate like venom eddie brock's been doing his own thing and it's not been a mini series it's not been uh loose and over here it is very 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 much a venom story and i love the twist donny cates is allowed i love the things that he's getting to play with and mark bagley is one of my favorite artists of all time so him getting back on eddie brock I consider Mark Bagley right up there with Todd McFarlane as my definitive Eddie Brock. He's probably drawn more of Venom and Eddie Brock than McFarlane. McFarlane's obviously the bar. He invented the character, but Bagley is right, right there. Uh, thank you all so much for all the well wishes. And I see a lot of requests to see my son. So the power of YouTube versus Collider Heroes is this is Spidey Cat. He is a titan of industry. I love him so much. This is the computer that betrayed me because it wouldn't let me live stream. This is why we were 20 minutes late. Uh, but, you know, Spidey Cat's here. Um, welcome back to me talking about comics. That was a brief Spidey Cat break. Uh, let's see. Uh, and then, let's see, let's see. We got, we got some, we got some aggression in the live chat. Uh, I, I mean, I don't want, I don't want to comment on that stuff. It's, it's neither here nor there. I, I, I disagree with some things that have been said. I will go on the record as saying I disagree with some things that have been said. But once again, in my usual coy brand of uh, not leaning into it, I, uh, this is my cat. He's fantastic. All right. So, uh, let's see what else after I made him jump by, by that loud sound. I'm so sorry, young man. Uh, Kill Lock. What else was I talking about? Venom. There's one book in between. I feel like it's right here. Once again, I'll have notes next time. This has been a whole thing. Uh, this cat is so much better than Cats 2019. I promise you he is a goddamn champion. Oh, uh, yeah. Tom Cruise, uh, pillow. I have, uh, an entire set. I have like 12, 10 or 12, uh, different civil war actor pillows because that's a completely normal thing. Who doesn't have that? It's totally Robert Downey Jr. As a civil war general is right over there. Totally normal. Uh, now what else are we going to talk about today? I want to know who you guys might want on comic book shopping. Uh, I want to know what guests you'd like to see. I want to know if there's any books that you particularly enjoy that you'd want me talking about. I want to use this channel to basically spend the time I couldn't do with a shortened heroes. Uh, John was always able to dive deep into characters and dive deep into creators. And, and the hour was certainly vital, but also there was so much less content every day and he had an hour. So I really want to give you guys content that John would be proud of. I really want to give you guys content that I'm going to be proud of. I really want to give you guys content that I can uniquely give on the internet because there are so many people, uh, basically 
talking comics, but I, I read so many and I want to share my perspective and I also want to share uh, it, it as relating to the movies. I want to share it as relating to what the town is doing. Uh, being that I'm in LA, I have a different perspective on, on certain things. Um, so whether you want that perspective or not, that's what you're getting. And that, that will be a unique thing uh, for hopefully this channel and what we want to do here. Uh, Ryan Reynolds, man, if we get Ryan Reynolds in comic book shopping, I, it'll be... It'll be a whole thing, man. That'll be a journey. Uh, Grant would be great. Uh, Grant's fantastic. Grant's one of the nicest people on the planet. If you don't watch Flash, that's okay, but just have it playing in the background for, to give Grant ratings. That dude is, is just good people. Um, I, I would absolutely, yes. And I don't know if Nick Cage is allowed in comic stores. Uh, I feel like he will buy them and, and a ty Tyrannosaurus Rex skull on the way out. Um, that man is, is just fascinating to me, and that'd be great. I mean, I'm not mad at it. All about it. Uh, Margot Robbie is promoting Birds of Prey soon. I would love to have Margot on. Uh, she is... Her choices she's made with comic book content between uh, how she shaped Harley Quinn into being such a force for the DC film, film universe and, like, the, the things she's optioning, she's doing an absolutely incredible job showing how much content can be made from comics and how important they are. I... I yes. Anytime. She is... She is... Open door policy for Miss Robbie. Um, oh, we got a cat on the move. Uh, what else did I want to talk to you guys about? Uh, New Mutants is coming out, and that ties beautifully into my thesis for this episode beyond Clatter Heroes talk, was I think Deadpool is going to be more active soon than people think. Uh, I think that Deadpool might tie into things really, really soon. Uh, I've, been, I've been theorizing Deadpool as the way they bring... Uh, the X-Men in, but not the X-Men per se. I think they might actually do something as insane as not necessarily Deadpool kills the Fox universe, which is my pipe dream. Um, I, I, I think that if they do that, the, the possibilities are endless. And it also has this really unique opportunity to kind of do the end game infinity war thing where they could wrap up a universe while starting a new universe. And if they have Deadpool kill the Fox universe, you can bring Chris Evans back without messing up continuity because it'd be human torch. You bring Michael B. Jordan back. Cause that'd be a great way to give that character at least some interesting screen time. Uh, you could have three different Cyclops get murked. Uh, you could do so much with the Fox universe and there are so many dupes of characters. It would be fascinating. Uh, I do have the best pipe dreams. These will never happen. Happen. unless you know marvel is as absolutely insane as i am but can you imagine using the time turner using the future opportunity with the madness of the multiverse having deadpool jump through multiverses or through times i don't know how they want to rationalize it they had kitty pride somehow have time travel abilities and days of future past and people bought it it was fine but use those opportunities to wrap up continuity like they did with the post credit scene uh like they ended the green lantern thing from ever starting but you can give everyone the goodbye and you could almost have Hugh Jackman come back in a way that wouldn't mess with Logan, which is so important to me because basically Logan ending the way it did is the only reason I don't want Hugh Jackman and Ryan Reynolds in a, in a comic movie together. But if they did it without continuity constraints, if they made new canon, you could also have Josh Brolin fighting as Thanos against Cable. Like what? A, that just, come on guys, it's right there. So with New Mutants, what if the post credit scene because they're not going to likely make a New Mutants 2. And I know New Mutants is a horror movie. I know it's a very different tone of movie. But can you imagine if at the end the post credit scene is Deadpool coming in, erasing the New Mutants continuity, leading into Deadpool 3? Can you just... It won't happen. But just this moment, I can dream. These tinfoil hat theories are just for me and now they're just for you. There is hope. Uh, let's see. What's the live chat saying? Uh, I want to see Fantastic Four handle Doctor Doom. I think you bring him in through a Wakandan embassy. I think you utilize the opportunity that a di diplomatic thriller allows, and you basically have Doctor Doom be the lead and have the Fantastic Four, not as supporting characters, but have the villain and the Fantastic Four be equal to screen time, like Daredevil did with Kingpin. You, you, you make them both very important, and you... Uh, I've heard the rumor about John Hamm too. I don't, I don't, I don't know if they're going to keep it. They, they've reshot so much of that movie and they also, it wouldn't make sense. We'll see. We'll see. I haven't seen the movie. Um, but I, I think you really have a good opportunity there to, to play around with stuff. Uh, Jason Isaacs for Doom. I love that. I would love Noah Hawley's Dr. Doom. Uh, who would I want to see play Dr. Doom? Oh man. Um, I'd like to give Oscar Isaac another chance after the, uh, the apocalypse debacle. Uh, I've always said Idris Elba because Heimdall didn't get any time to actually be, 
uh, a character until, like, he had a few moments in each movie, but not really. Like, I, w- I would love that. Also, uh, worth noting, New Mutants is where Deadpool debuted. New Mutants number 98 was the beginning of all of this. If he could end the New Mutants, which is where he started, there is this beautiful cycle of insanity with that. Um, the Big Bad of Phase 5, I could totally see that. Um, Bernthal and Cox back in the MCU, I keep hearing rumors, but I think they're just rumors. I imagine that would be a lot of, of, of red tape, uh, Deadpool colored red tape. I think it'd be a, a real, real problem. Uh, dude, Jake, thank you very much. Let's, let's throw this thing. And I, once again, this, this haphazard of a stream, this is why this is, I saw someone say this is, uh, this is episode zero. This is absolutely episode zero. This is like, do you remember in the nineties when they had, uh, issued negative ones? So like untold tales of Spider-Man negative one, and they had like, they just told a backstory. That's what this episode is going to be. This is me learning and failing about live streaming. This is me learning and failing about how to actually do any of this. And then I'm going to, yeah, I'm, I need a super chat. Uh, once again, I need, I need to get all that going. So this episode of me rambling and me not knowing what's going on is because this is an issue negative one. This is Marvel negative one. This is Koi's. Okay, I'm going to let you in. I'm thinking the title of my show. I'm going to give it to you right now. Because you're, you're 25 minutes into me saying a lot of insanity. So I'm thinking I'm going to call the show Koi's Comics, Cinema, and Curls. Parentheses. English doesn't make sense. Because I love alliterations. And cinema's a C. And curls and comics are a C. And I want to talk about comics. I want to talk about the gym. I want to talk about all sorts of things. And basically, I want it to be like comedians in cars getting coffee. Occasionally, we're going to have guests and all those things. And then, because that title's so long, I think I'm going to call it Koi Cubed. So, we're going to talk fitness. We're going to talk comics. We're going to talk cinema. Cinema's got to see it. Should be an alliteration. I love... Oh, I think I think people are happy about this. I think you guys are with me. Uh, so that is the, the tentative plan for what we're going to do with this thing. But once again, this episode is messy because I wasn't expecting uh, my January 2nd to go the way it did. Uh, I wasn't expect- expecting my year to kick off this way. I actually scheduled my Christmas in January because I wanted to be here for the holidays to get stuff ramped up for the new year. And now I'm doing Christmas in... Uh, in mid January. So basically I'll be, I'll be jumping on that. Uh, and I'll still be trying to live stream for you guys, but this starting of a YouTube of a Patreon of all of this, uh, happened at, at, uh, like 11 AM January 2nd. So I'm going to be figuring out what all of this is. Um, and I really hope that this works for you guys because we can do, man, we can do two hours. We can do weird three hours. Podcasts can be as long as they want. Uh, we can do, almost anything because I will not be shit talking. That's the one thing I won't do, but we can do a lot with this, with this platform. And I really want to make that as big as we can. Uh, thank you guys. Uh, seriously for all the <laughs> improvise, adapt, overcome, take a shot of Jameson. That is of course the tagline. And I agree in the live chat. Koi crimes can live here with some impunity because this isn't monetized yet. So I haven't made any money for my Koi crimes yet. But we can. Uh, and also, uh, the potato scale. We have much more time for the potato scale here. Frank gets it. We have so much more time. Uh, and now, let's see. Koi's comic book countdown. Weekly comic launch dates or some shit. Yes. So what I'm thinking is, okay. I've been talking for 25 minutes. Just give me a sec. Okay. Let's do uh, an idea of every week we break down the top, I don't know, eight or nine comics. We do the best of the week. And I can, I can, I can suggest those to you. And then over my Patreon, what I might do is you tell me your five favorite characters or five favorite runs, something that gives me your sense of tone. And then for a Patreon thing, I might do like a custom pull list. I think it'd be really fun to, the reason I love comic book shopping, man, is because you, you give Jake Gyllenhaal a copy of Saga and the image of him holding Saga helps hundreds of people, if not thousands of people feel more comfortable picking up Saga. It's about using the power of the internet to connect people to comics they might not connect to. Like I, I get how important celebrity culture is to clicks and I get how important uh, celebrity culture is to what makes this industry run. But if you're using it wrong, then you're doing it wrong. And I think the power of comic book shopping is a, chop- a chance to do it right. Comic books were in the basement for, for decades, guys. They were literally tucked away. They were hidden under button up shirts. I remember putting my Spider-Man shirt on and hiding it. This is an opportunity through comic book shopping to use the power of fame and celebrity to bring awareness to stuff. And that's why I want to keep doing that show. But we can do 
Also, guys, you may notice I'm wearing a Saga shirt because have you read Saga? Now, I think what we can do with this channel is I can bring comics to you guys. Uh, I can I can connect things to you directly. So I want to maybe through Patreon because it's going to take a lot of time because I'll be reading every single comic book. Recommend what you uh, should be reading. Uh, and, and I can kind of like do a comic book shopping through the power of the internet for you, uh, dear, dear patron, dear viewer. But I will also, no matter what, give you guys my favorite comics of the week. Uh, I want to give you guys my where I think things are going of the week. I want to give you guys my reviews of movies. I might give you guys my reviews of TV because your boy cries like a bitch when he watches This Is Us and he hasn't had a place to say it yet. So if you guys want to see me talk about Randall and get some get some feels, because I, okay, I always thought I wanted to be Jack. And then I thought I wanted to be Toby. I've always thought I was Kevin, but as soon as I figured out I was a Randall, I was way closer to being a Toby and a Jack. And that was the moment. Like, that was when I realized, hey, this show's about me. And Randall, he gets it. Uh, I, I don't talk about all my weird eccentricities on Collider Heroes because it's only like 20 minutes. Here, you get the weird shit. Uh, I have anxiety and OCD and all the shit Randall does. And seeing him have a full-blown anxiety attack on season one gave me so much confidence and like, oh, this is a thing that happens to people. It's on a show that's on network TV. And that was so empowering, man. So uh, basically, I want to give you guys all of the stuff I couldn't give you on a network. Um... I'm basically seeing this as the best possible opportunity. Uh, I, I hate the way things went down. I, I hate the way uh, all of this is unfolding, but it might be the best possible opportunity because I wasn't gonna, I've never been on YouTube. How many shows have you guys seen me on on YouTube? I've been on Movie Fights for years. I've been doing stuff at Screen Junkies, at Nerdist, at Collider, at Popcorn Talk, at friends houses on on streaming services and i never used my youtube so frankly this might be that that uh literal lemonade from lemons like this kick in the pants to me being like well let's do this thing so um i actually you know what i don't dylan um i don't get anxiety while filming because this feels like connecting to so many people i care about um and it feels comfortable i actually do better with bigger crowds than smaller crowds and i'm not good at uh at, at, at like long form unless it's big like it's just my my comfy it's my blanket you know what i mean so um personally i don't get anxiety filming uh this helps me and and i think big crowds help me and i think that comic book culture i'm gonna be selfish as fuck i think comic book culture getting as big as it has has been like ah more of my people and it's just made a bigger blanket for me so another reason i really want to give so much of my time to this because uh it it the, yeah, if you guys follow Will Smith on Instagram, if you don't, it's life-changing. Um, it is... He has this whole thing about you spend time and you pay attention. And those are two things that are inexhaustible but finite. Sorry, they are exhaustible and finite. So I think that, once again, with the, the dying, uh, all we have is time and all we can give is our attention, really. Money is something we invented. Time is something we invented. Uh, but we've quantified time even more than money. So I think if I'm going to invest in anything in my life, it's going to be comic books and connecting with people and movies and sharing my love of art and entertainment. And that's why it's been silly. I haven't had a YouTube uh, because that's exactly what this is. And now the the there's no tether. I have full freedom. Uh, Schmodown idea for the Mouthy Mercs. Uh, from the Drew crew with Drew Guy, Drew McWeeny, Video Drew, Chan Drew, and Andrew managed by Koi. Jan Drew, even though it's John Drew, I like the play. I like where you're going. Uh, I also, uh, I'm not going to give away any of my schmo ideas, but, uh, you know, you just listed seven players. Maybe one or two of them are people I'm looking at. Who knows? Who knows? That's, I don't even know if that's an exclusive because I was so vague, but who knows? Uh, I did watch Roka's live stream. Uh, I'm, I'm a fan of that man doing his own thing as well. Um, him, him. Uh, yeah, I, I, I feel for Oka, and I, I'm super proud of him. I think he's going to be killing it. Um, what you're doing about your internet cleanse you mentioned on Twitter a few times ago. You keep it or going to show up more? Ooh, internet cleanse. What is that? Explain internet, quen, uh, internet cleanse for me. Inside scoops with Koi. Uh, I have some scoops, and I'll give you scoops. But I'm never going to hunt scoops because I hate journalists that hunt scoops or lie or go for, like, exclusives, and they just make people uncomfortable. Like, if I'm, if I'm talking to Rob Liefeld, first name drop of the pod. There it was. 
I'm going to get that out of the way. Can you see all those names I dropped? Uh, first name drop of the pod was Rob Liefeld. But if I'm talking to Rob about something that is going to cause business issues later, I am not going to do that on the show. Uh, so if I, I want to bring people comfort in, in knowing me, and I'm never going to betray any of my friends that are news, and I'm never going to, like, if I was talking to you, okay, say you, uh, uh, let's say Mike. Uh, Mike K, if me and you were talking at a thing and I told you like, hey, I'm going to draft blah, 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 and then you blew my shit up on Twitter, I would not be cool with it. So I'm not going to do that to my friends. <laughs> so no scoops, no scoops. Uh, all my friends, and, and also like, what a better way to have people come talk because uh, I'm going to be the whitest white guy on the internet and say the thing all white guys say with podcasts and say, you know, I don't want it to be an interview. I want it to be a conversation, but I mean it. Like if I have my friends over to have a conversation we might do it with, with you guys, so that would be a better move than interviewing people. Uh, a beer was just handed to me, and I'm so happy. Uh, how about for the name of your Koi's Talk? So when I'm thinking of the name of the, the video will be Koi's Comics Cinema and Curls, parentheses, English doesn't make sense, Koi Cubed for short. The name of the podcast, I'm thinking Koi Cast, because it's right there, and Comcast is evil, and I'm going to balance that shit with Koi Cast, uh, because balancing the force is very important. Um, what did I say about 15 minutes? I would like RDJ as a guest in comic book shopping. David Smither, if you can get me RDJ's phone number, email, or any way to contact him appropriately, I will get you Robert Downey Jr. on this show in a heartbeat. Oh, and I love the idea of uh, Koi Pond. You guys calling yourselves the Koi Pond is the most flattering shit for me because I kid you not, every time I see a Koi Pond, I go over and I greet it as if they were my brethren because it is a pond of Koi's and I feel a kinship. And I am very, very proud of that kinship. Uh, he is promoting Dr. Doolittle, but unfortunately Dr. Doolittle comes out in two weeks and his press tour, he is only here for like six hours. Not that I've tried to get Robert Downey Jr. for the last year or anything, but I'm trying uh, and I'm available. Uh, Tom Holland also, by the way, is one of the sweetest, most endearing. When I met him in London doing the Jake Gyllenhaal episode, uh, I, I was shocked at how much that boy was Spider-Man. Um, I would love to have Tom Holland on the show so you guys could see how much he's invested in Spider-Man, how much he cares. Mm. Yeah, Rockstars is a fantastic name, and Koi Pond feels right here. Also, uh, it's been 36 minutes, so I'm going to cycle back. The love I've received in the last two days has been like nothing I have ever, ever seen the internet too. Uh, and I made the joke and I've been here since Winter Soldier. Like I saw what Winter Soldier did. It was universally loved. You guys, man, uh, I, I have, I have gained more new followers that have all been just as enthusiastic as the old followers. And all of you have just raised the bar of holy crap. Like the love is incredible. The Twitter love has been incredible. Um, the, the Instagram positivity, uh, the, the fact that I hadn't even published my fucking Patreon yet. It wasn't even loaded and people had already uh, uh, contributed. And, and I'm going to write down the names first. The first 10, I want to give some love on the next episode um, because I just couldn't believe it. You guys, I haven't even figured out what the different things are going to be. And I already have like 21 different people on my Patreon without even telling you what it's going to be. And that kind of love is so unique. That kind of uh, selfless Caring is so unheard of on the internet. So the koi pond is dope. Like the koi pond is full of, you guys are good fish, man. Good fish, excellent people. Uh, so I just want to to take the, the minute and say that meant more to me than you can possibly know. To be honest, the second sucked, but it didn't suck. Like that, that news was awful because I lost my dream job. I lost the thing that I, I've wanted to do since I was a kid and got to do for two years, which again, I am forever grateful, but I got so much love and compassion that it, it was a good day. Like I, I will hold on to January 2nd as a positive day, which is insane. Like you guys balanced that news out. So thank you up oh, first patron. Oh yeah. AJ Lancaster was the first patron. AJ Lancaster found my Patreon before I did. Before I knew it was there, AJ Lancaster is a saint. I have sainted him. In the Koi Pond, he is the first saint. Thank you, AJ Lancaster. You're a goddamn champion. Um, I want to do a full hour. You guys cool with a full hour? I know it's like 5 a.m. for a lot of people, and I also know it is, uh, it is insane that it's 11. And the Patriots game, we lost, so I'm going to have to cope. Uh, so I want to do another 20 minutes with you guys. Uh, what else do you guys want me to get into? We're going to do Koi and Spidey Cat vids. Are you kidding me? I got, I got a flurkin in my house. 
You think I'm not going to hang out with my boy? Uh, Spidey is also the best dog you've never met. He just looks like a cat. Uh, do you want to do more than an hour, Kyle Martin? Okay, let's let's talk about it. Uh, Donny Cates, Thor number one, I have not read. I just finished the comics from December 25th. Uh, I've read a couple from this week, but it has, as you may have guessed, been a motherfucking week. So I have not uh, gotten into that as much as I'd like to. Uh, let's see, 2 a.m. for Brazilians, but I'm fine. Thank you for hanging out from Brazil. Um, let's see what we got. Okay, I can do this all day. I, I intend to. In fact, I would like you guys to tell me some of the things you'd like me to cover, and we'll basically try to loop that into my story structure, and we'll kind of like we'll kind of shape this thing together because as this is coming together, as this is a negative one episode, uh, we will we we can build our own thing. We can make the fucking two hour heroes we wanted, and we can do uh, reactions to stuff. Uh, I've got some ideas with Amy. I keep seeing Amy uh, pop up in here, and I have some ideas with Amy. It is going to be uh, it is going to be schedule based, but I have two solid ideas they're one-offs i'm not talking about doing a show with amy because their schedules are crazy maybe but I'm, I'm not saying no or yes but i have two separate ideas i really really want to do with amy that i am so so excited about uh as far as infinite crisis uh christ on infinite earths i definitely will be covering that when it's back uh, I'm definitely very excited to see where it goes. I liked each episode more than the last. I'm not going to lie to you. That first episode was a lot. So I didn't know if it was my cup of tea, but by episode three, by the time I got to flash, man, the flash show is so good. The bar is so high. I was fully in. So I definitely, uh, we'll, we'll get to crisis when it's back hundred percent. Uh, WandaVision. I think WandaVision is going to be the game changer that daredevil was. I think seeing the budget and seeing the... Look at Mandalorian, for example. I think seeing what we can do with serialized TV, it is so much more suited for the comic book world. So I think there's a really good opportunity to show that with WandaVision. And I think following Tom King's Vision Run and House of M is where they're going to go. Two of the craziest, biggest, boldest storylines of the last, of modern comics. Uh, and I think WandaVision moving to this year is a great, like, oh, we're here to stay. We're here to play. I think it's fantastic. Uh, I know you're still doing comic book shopping, but I feel like they slapped you in the face, but I'm happy you're doing that. Thank you, Jeremy, Riller, uh, Jeremy Miller. Uh, I, I, I've said a few times, like, it's been a shitty week, but I'm very excited for comic book shopping. Comic books with Koi, every comic book Wednesdays. I'm with the shits. Take my money. Goddamn right. Uh, also, uh, let me know, uh, like, I'm thinking definitely... Tuesday, I might say what comics I think are going to be good. And then like Friday or Saturday, maybe doing a, a like, these are the comics I enjoyed for the week. So I'm going to maybe try to do this once or twice a week, uh, depending on how well this goes. Uh, because honestly, uh, I lost a job this week. So I got to figure out how to pay electricity and rent. So depending on how time intensive, I, I would, if you guys notice, I will talk all day. Cap fights all day. I'll do this all day, but it'll be talking. So if this turns into a thing, we'll, we'll make it a thing and I'll try to do a few shows. We'll, we'll make it a thing. And also, uh, the fact that you guys want more content, it, it's such a compliment that you want more of this because I feel like I'm hanging out with my friends on the couch and talking to you guys with, uh, with a beer. So that's great. Koi commentary on some of your fave movies. Yes. Uh, the beauty of doing, thank you, Frank. The beauty of doing this this way is I can talk about Fight Club. I can talk about The Matrix, which I would have loved to do for the 20th anniversary. I would talk about This Is Us, like I said. I will talk about what movie I saw this week. I'll also talk about past movies I've really enjoyed. I might even do a Patreon tier for, like, audio commentaries. Like, doing a full, um... Like, um, you know when they had DVDs and people actually gave a shit about filmmakers? Uh, like, doing a commentary on comic book related trivia, but also other movies like this thought, this thought, this actor tied to this. I would love to do some commentaries uh, and watch movies effectively with you guys and make that uh, make that a tier and also do, like, a live chat. I think it'd be a lot of, a lot of fun. Uh, will you still do some stuff on you, uh, YouTube and not just Patreon? Absolutely! I, I think that I'll be doing... Um, most of my stuff on Patreon will land on YouTube like days or a week later, and I will still also do YouTube. This YouTube, this channel right here will not be, uh, empty and it will not just be Patreon. I promise you, I will be, I'll be right here, uh, for a lot of stuff that is not Patreon. Uh, it's just going to be augmented with Patreon. Um, I don't have the money to support Patreon, so I don't want to make this, you know, cast system bullshit where you can only pay to be a fan. Ah, you're with me. Let's, let's do a thing. Um, did I like Skywalker? Um, I liked, <laughs> I'm not negative on my channel. Did I like Skywalker? I liked a series of scenes that Skywalker was, but I think the movie overall for me undermined my personal perspective of what Star Wars means to me. 
Um, I believe that Star Wars is... Uh, I like that Star Wars represents that anyone can be a hero, and I love that Luke came from nothing seemingly, and then the twist made it he was something, which I love that twist, but I don't think everyone should have that twist. I love that Star Wars represents that everyone has the chance to be mighty. I love that the Empire is this evil, oppressive thing that believes in bloodlines, and now the whole universe believes in bloodlines. I don't think three families run the whole bitch. It just... I, I liked that, that it felt like Star Wars. I liked that the, the sound design and the imagery all made me have that nostalgic love for Star Wars, but I personally don't like that the last few minutes i'm gonna spoil star wars because it's been out for three weeks i don't like that uh she's a palpatine uh so that defeats the entire meaning of star wars for me it's like if if it's i'm not vegetarian but it's like if i was vegetarian and i've been eating beyond burger for for five years and then someone was like by the way there's meat in that <laughs> and no fuck you like that's not what it stands for so i if it's, i've been enjoying the burger but it's not what it stands for so personally i like last jedi goodbye my followers it's been a pleasure <laughs> If you made it to minute 45 and then you just left, I get it. I like Last Jedi. Um, let's see. Do I think the JJ cut exists? Uh, I think that a cut of every movie exists that the director originally had and that I don't think that... I think the movie was released as it was meant to, you know? Like, I think that they made the cut they wanted to and it came out. I do think there was a lot of uh, rushed stuff, but I think that they released the movie you wanted to, personally. Uh, I think I just saw a uh, thing I wanted to talk about. Uh... Oh, this feels so weird. I'm in the live chat and I'm scrolling on my face. Uh, I have let, read a lot of recommender stuff. I love uh, Black Science. I think that's what they asked about. Um, wait, I have not read that. It's on my list to read. I have not read it. I'll report back. But Rick Remender is, is brilliant. I am such a fan. Um, and I, his new stuff on um, Deadly Class is some of the best Deadly Class has ever been. If you're not reading Deadly Class, it, it had a nice soft reboot around 41 where storylines kind of wrapped themselves up and like took off in new ways. Deadly Class is so accessible right now and it's so incredible right now. I'm a huge Rick Remender fan. Um, Ford Ferrari does get a Best Picture nomination. It's also one of my favorite movies of the year. Um, I am a huge fan of Ford vs. Ferrari. I'm so glad it did well. Uh, that's one of those tricky movies where Fox didn't know what was happening, I think, when they started promoting it. And then Disney didn't... I didn't know if Disney thought it was going to be as big as it was. Disney knew one's word of mouth got out and it's killing it but it was definitely interesting to see that be a part of the merger because it was a it was a, if i know if i know correctly it was a fox film um and i absolutely adored it uh i also i got to go to the premiere of that and it was one of the most electric premieres i have ever been to that audience was so enthralled it was it was such a cool captivating experience to see it in imax and to see it like with people that made it and the blood sweat and tears was all there uh christian bale puts everything into a role so being in the room with him watching his movie, uh, it's just something special. Um, and that movie has a really, uh, a place in my heart for a lot of reasons. So I, I'm a fan. Um, yes, please no Star Wars fights. Uh, please. I, I, the fact that it even got brought up. Oh man. Um, Jody Hauser. I love Jody. What are we talking about Jody Hauser? Uh, Warren Ellis is transmet planetary. Oh yeah. Okay. We could totally talk about planetary and transmet. Absolutely. Derek is a homie. Derek, I love you so much. Uh, Derek Robertson, uh, transmet is very important. Uh, and I would love to take the time to break stuff like that down. What I'll probably do with that stuff is talk about it in one of these chunks and then do breakout videos. Uh, I might try to do like an hour or two with you guys and then also do like, Koi's Comic Corner, break out comic thoughts, uh, you know, the movie reviews, break out those thoughts and, uh, and get all those things going. Uh, thanks for the video. Gotta go to bed. We'll finish watching later. Absolutely, Miranda. Go to bed. Get some sleep. It's very important. Uh, we will see you here tomorrow. Jody Hauser was, oh, Black Widow. Jody Hauser's Black Widow is so good. Jody has written so many things, uh, that I have loved and her Black Widow is so punchy, pun intended, so smart, so much fun. Uh, Natasha is in great hands and Jody Hauser's brilliant also her Stranger Things comic uh much to David Harbour's chagrin because he's not as featured as he liked is fantastic so check that out for sure um oh yeah no when Saga comes back I mean we'll we'll, we'll scheme some stuff come on it's definitely happening uh also Harley and Ivy is brilliant every Harley Quinn book right now is so solid uh Joker and Harleen Criminal Sanity the Harleen book itself uh, Harley Quinn by Sam Humphreys, uh, the, the Harley and Ivy book. So good. I have not started the Harley Quinn animated series. Uh, Igor Domingo's, Hey, I know you from the internets. Welcome. Thank you. Um, I have not started it yet, but 
what I've seen is very Deadpool, and I like Deadpool, and I'm not mad. A lot of people are upset that uh, that they kind of did the Deadpool thing, but the character, it, it works. It totally lines up for me. Uh, I have not met Brian K. Vaughn, um, Zach Mendoza, and I fear the day I do, because I may faint. Uh, <laughs> my love of Saga may be so strong that I can't hang. I have actually a way harder time meeting comic writers and artists than I do actors because I was an actor uh, and I was a stunt man and I've worked on so many sets and I've done I've done the set life but in my brain when you make a comic that is that is mythology and love and characters all coming out of your head in a way that I am just baffled by um, I've written even I've had like screenplays stuff done I've, I've, I've done things but for some reason comics are so precious so when I meet a writer or an artist I can't hang uh, so it's really funny to me that I, when Tom King came over to me at Comic-Con to talk about the Jake Gyllenhaal episode of comic book shopping, I was more nervous to talk about talking about Jake Gyllenhaal with Tom King than I was working with Jake Gyllenhaal, who is, uh, you know, I fucking Donnie Darko on, man. I've been a fan of Jake since I was 13. Um, yeah, I did stunts on, uh, let's see, what are the bigger things? Uh, I did stunts on Dark Knight Rises. I, you won't find me, but I did stunts on that. Uh, I did stunts on Star Trek Into Darkness. Uh, it was funny actually talking to Damon. Damon Lindelof, uh, paid my bills for like a year because I was a stuntman on Into Darkness for a lot of that run. I was in Nibirin. I was one of the white aliens. Uh, I was a few of the white aliens on that alien planet. Uh, let's see, let's see. Yeah, and, and comic book, like I said, comic book artists and writers are still deities to me so brian Kavon or fiona staples i may swoon uh mitch gerard's when i ran into him oh my goodness uh man mitch is great and his beard is fantastic uh so i i'm cold Bado, thank you for joining while you were here uh in the dark knight rises i was one of bane's henchmen uh i was one of the guys with like the red scarves and like the merc stuff and i got to work with tom hardy who uh <laughs> i am a huge tom hardy fan uh, and he and I have the same birthday, so weirdly enough, we were once MySpace friends because I was that weirdo that went on IMDb and looked at people with my birthday, and I wasn't shit, and Tom Hardy was doing Bronson, I think, and MySpace friends, and we worked together on Dark Knight Rises, and I'm a huge Tom Hardy fan. Uh, let's see. Stunts, stunts, stunts. Uh, stunts hurt. Um, stunts are a precision art. I think stunt people and casting directors are the two most underappreciated corners of the film industry. I think that uh, the the freaking Academy Awards needs to recognize stunt people yesterday, man. They need to recognize casting directors yesterday. Think about the MCU. Without Sarah Finn, every single one of those incredible actors we have today wouldn't necessarily be the character they are. They might be if another casting director did, but she shaped a universe that is a billion dollar industry, a multi-billion dollar industry, a an industry that changed cinema, and she helped build what it is because Chris Evans is Cap. Downey Jr. is Iron Man. Chris Pratt was a complete left field choice. So many left field choices. And without her, that doesn't exist. Without her, that doesn't have the opportunity to flourish into something that changes even the comics. Because I read Chris Evans as Cap in so many books now, and that's because of her. So that, to me, is so slept on. We have all these awards, and man, they need to give CD some love. Uh, and also stunt people. As soon as the mask goes on, that is a new person, and those people don't get love. Mad Max, Tom Hardy wouldn't bring press around until his stunt guy was in the chair next to him. He did all of his Mad Max press with his stunt guy because his stunt guy was right there. On the day, he should be right there in the press line. So stunt guys absolutely need more credit, absolutely need more love. It is an art. It is very special. Uh, I love, uh, I need to give, I, I'm going to use this to give stunt people more love. Uh, my boy Chris Brewster was an incredible stunt man I worked with on Star Trek, and he was also Daredevil and the Winter Soldier, and he needs, he, he needs attention and affection and appreciation. He needs all the Asians. Uh, let's see. Celeb workout body goal. Great question for the comic cinema and curls show uh i would say somewhere between zach efron and ryan reynolds uh i am a short ish fellow and i am also a uh a what do you what do you call it when you uh it's hard for me to get as lean as ryan reynolds that's what i'll say i'm not i'm not like a lithe body type i get i get gains um, so I would love to be able to be as cut as zach efron or as ryan reynolds was in blade trinity or deadpool uh but they're a bit taller than me. I think, I think Zach's a little taller than me. I know Ryan's way taller than me. Anyway, uh, I would love to be that kind of shredded. It is more about willpower than anything when you get to that level. I've been down to about 8% body fat. Nah, probably like 9. 9% body fat, like thereabouts. They were like 6. So I, whew, that'd be a whole thing. But that is the dream. I will be there at one point. I am not a keg barrel, good sir. I am like a beer shape? I don't know. 
Um, do I have more Deadpool or Spider-Man clothes? I have so many. Actually, you know what? We should do... Ooh. You know what? I'm going to do a thing. It'll be Patreon first, and then it'll go to YouTube. I promise most things are going to end up over here. Uh, I'm going to do a... Go through all my comics with you guys. Uh, maybe my comic book clothes. Like, we'll go through clothes and comics together. It'll be like a yard sale where I don't get rid of my shit. Um, but I'd love to go through, like, comic conditions and talk about issues and, like, look at covers together uh, and actually, like draft through the my particular uh comic uh tom hardy is about my height to spoil alert this person sitting down comfortably so you don't know how tall i am oh shit zach's my height okay i'm like five eight and a half um yeah so we, we can look at comics clothes all that jazz uh <laughs> coys comics and girls and closets hey guys welcome to my crib no that'd be weird i don't want to like i think i don't want to show my house that's weird but we'll go to the closet yeah we can do that um let's see the uh original script for batman I haven't read. Uh, I will look that up because that fascinates me. The original script for James Cameron's Spider-Man is one of my favorite things. I actually did a lot. I did a table read of that with uh, Hector Navarro, who I'm sure you guys know. Uh, my friend Whitney Moore, Amy, uh, Matt Key. We did a whole thing. Uh, I got McGregor in two weeks, and that's going to be a great fight. It could go either way, but I think McGregor has so much to prove. I love Cerrone. Don't get me wrong. That's going to be an incredible fight. But I think that... Connor's going to be training in a different way. Uh, I don't know. I think we're going to see a different Connor. I think Connor hasn't fought in as a 30 year old fought in. hasn't fought as a 30 year old yet. I think he's going to come out like a different build, a different man, a different beast. And I am so excited. Uh, Mando is better than I thought it would be. Mando actually gives me more hope for the MCU shows. Uh, Mando gives me so much hope for where the Disney plus format can go uh mando is incredible it actually it really balances out uh what i think the star wars universe can be i love the non-skywalker stuff balance with the skywalker stuff i love to see us go more into the galaxy far far away absolutely love mando uh punch punch what is punch punch i believe you mm. um i think that i we could down the line see stuff like that man like the james cameron spidey as a what if i think season five of what if you know as we go it can get totally absolutely crazy um, let's see, let's see, let's see. Guys, we have almost got an hour. This has made me very, very happy. And I have not been able to keep up with most of these live chats as I scroll my face. Um, but I definitely want to do this type of thing as much as possible. And I definitely will get the super chat set up so I can see these much clearer because it's very small and it's over my face. Um, I'm sorry, I never saw the poll. It was over by the time I caught up with CR and joined live. Uh, so go to my Instagram to check out my polls for December 25th. I think that's what you're talking about. Uh, and then I will be putting up my comics, my top 10 or 12 comics every week. And then we'll talk about them here. So we'll make a full comic, Koi's Comic Corner here. Uh, and then we will also be doing what comics I think uh, will be good in the future. We will be diving into comics. Absolutely. Uh, I read Deceased. I really enjoyed Deceased. Tom Taylor has not written anything I haven't enjoyed yet. Uh, Deceased, I'm not much of a zombie guy, but he made me, like, care about zombies. It was a lot of fun. It was funny, man. And the action was great, and it was, like, horrific. You felt... You felt empathy for characters you already love, but in new ways, and I think that's a, that's, that's a testament of good writing, when you're actually invested in characters in ways you never thought you would be. All right. Koi is pulling for you. Oh, I like that. That's a great... Okay, maybe not Koi's Comic Corner. Maybe Koi is pulling for you, because I am. I'm here with you guys. That is a fantastic call. All right, let's see. Uh, I have not read Astro City since high school, so I was a big fan when I read it then, but I honestly I couldn't tell you why. I remember I loved the covers. I remember I loved the scope, but it's been a decade, so I will absolutely re-up that one. It's one I wanted to actually reread for comic book shopping, because I remember I loved the hell out of it. Uh, you can add Streamlabs instead of going with Super Chats. Uh, let's see, $7 a month and you can start it ASAP for my next live stream. Okay, I love that. Fantastic, thank you. Haskell, oh dude, Haskell, thank you, Edward. Thank you so much for all the help you've been today, man. Thank you for uh, retweeting and sharing and building all the stuff you did. It means the world. I know how active you were with Collider, so the fact that you are, are so active with all of us after is, uh, it means the world that you've been helping out all the people that we... The, 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 the post collider folk. Uh, it, it's really rad. Thank you. Uh, na, 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 na. Oh, the new Spider-Man game. I literally bought a PS4 for man. And I have no regrets. I, I, 
I've only played that game, really. I have some other games, because uh, I don't know if you guys know Joey Rasool uh, over at Geek and & Sundry, and he was at Clyro with us. He got me games for my birthday, and I haven't been able to play them yet, and that was my last birthday. It's been over a year, so shout out to Joey Rasool for being a great little angel person, and I have not played the games yet, and I, I need to. But Spider-Man on PS4 was somehow worth $400, which is so much money, so much money. Um, it, it changed what I thought about gaming. I hadn't gamed since... Spidey on PS2, and I gamed with PS4 Spidey, and I have no regrets, and I need to get back into gaming. It's a, it is an absolute game changer. All right. Uh, recent Silver Surfer Black stuff. Oh, dude, okay. Star Fry, we were talking about Donny Cates earlier. Donny Cates was able to make Silver Surfer into a character that I... I never understood uh, the character. Um, Stan Lee said that Silver Surfer was his favorite character because it gave him a better perspective on humanity by stepping away from it, and I never felt that. And I always wanted to because I love Stan and it never registered for me. And then Donny Cates was able to change Silver Surfer in such a way that I've been reading old Silver Surfer in a new light. So he he is a man. Donny Cates just gets it. Um, I'm actually most likely going to be uh, with Donny in Hawaii at Amazing Comic Con in February. So I'll be talking to Donny about all of that craziness. And if you guys live in Hawaii or if you want to uh, go to Hawaii Comic Con, Donny Cates, uh, I'll be talking Thor, I'll be talking Silver Surfer Black. We're going to talk all sorts of stuff. Uh, Donny's a friend of the show, a friend of the friend of the me. Um, and Donny, man, I love that guy's work. I love I love his writing. Uh, let's see. D -d 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 crates of koi in prediction first time around. oh uh robert pattinson the bat suit i think we will see robert pattinson the bat suit in the spring i think we will see it maybe as early as wondercon i feel like wondercon is going to start getting bigger and bigger um i don't know if it'll be like dc brings the bat suit big but i feel like we're going to start seeing images maybe as early as spring i don't know all right let's see uh we're going to do another five minutes because i feel like just over an hour because you guys were so patient for about Frickin' not five minutes, but like 20 minutes. So I want to give you guys uh, some love because thank you again so freaking much. Um, I have never been to New York City Comic Con. As, as a call to arms, good people of the internet, if you know anyone that works at New York City Comic Con, if you know of anyone that knows anyone that works at New York City Comic Con, I want to go so bad. I'm, I'm from Boston. I'm an East Coast kid, and I have never been to East Coast cons uh, I've never been to Boston Con, which is my home. I would love to go to one of those. So I would love to moderate. I would love to do any of that. Uh, I would love to figure out any of that. Um, yeah. Let's see. Uh, na, na, na. Justin Pace. Stop watching Heroes because of you. It's great you're positive and all, but stop dick riding his legacy. But everyone send him money now that he needs it from you. Funny how he did before. Hey, Justin Pace. Um, I, oh man, fuck you. Um, but also John and I shared a love of comics is how we, we were friends and how we met. And I have made sure to very consciously never, uh, I don't even like talking about him because of people like you and he's my friend. So fuck you sincerely. Um, but no, um, I, I'm here because I want to talk about comics and I'm here because I got to take over a show when I lost my friend and I'm here, um, because people, good ones, um, decided they wanted to hear what I had to say about comics and stuff since I lost my show. So uh, that couldn't be further from the truth. And I'm sorry that your life is so shitty that you felt the need to lash out like a fucking cunt. So end of that. Um, let's see. Uh, da, 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 da. Amy, Amy, Amy. Yes, I'm going to scheme stuff with Amy. Let's see. Uh, oh, dude, Brazil Comic Con is a goal. Brazil Comic Con is the dream. Uh, Brazil Comic Con is... I, I can't... I can't even imagine Brazil Comic Con because I've always wanted to go to Brazil and now Brazil Comic Con is this incredible piece of pop culture that makes comics worldwide. Like Brazil Comic Con showed the entire world that it's not just about Americans. It's not just about what New York and California feel. Brazil Comic Con is this fixture of comics are worldwide in such a way they debuted Venom footage there. They're debuting all sorts of exclusives there. Brazil Comic Con is is holy shit. Uh, yeah, absolute bucket list goal. I would love to do that by all means. Um, all right. All right. I don't want to end in an angry notes. Let's do two more questions because because uh, I got mad. Uh, na, 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 na. Uh, Spider Man PS4 book Hostile Takeover. Oh yeah, the the, the PS4 spinoff books are great. Um, the Velocity one was so much fun. They did a really solid time making sure it felt like the game, not like just another Spider Man. Uh, they're all ages, which is really great for people. Um, they're they're a really solid run and they're super accessible whether you've read the game, or played the game or not. So if you want to check those out, I absolutely recommend it. Um, okay. Did it? Okay. 
Terry Brown, if we lost you on the shuffle, let's get this last question. Um, what do you think of Leonardo DiCaprio as Norman Osborn, and do you have the dream casting for Spider-Man or superheroes? Okay, uh, I'm gonna do Koi casting a lot. So Leonardo DiCaprio as Norman Osborn is fantastic. I am a huge fan of Leo, and I think having a Leo, uh, uh, Norman Osborn that was uh, really personable and really uh, friendly and like the American, like every man, and then twisting him, that's why I've always said Tom Hanks. The only problem I might have with that is because Dane DeHaan and, and Leo look so much alike, it would be tricky with Harry Osborn being Dane DeHaan in the last iteration. But I am all for it. I think Leo can play dark. I think he wants to play darker. I loved him in Django. I loved him in The Revenant. But I also love him in Wolf of Wall Street and everything. So I think a Norman Osborn that switches on you would be absolutely incredible. Uh, so yes, I would like Mayor and then President Osborn. I think that Leo could absolutely slay. And I think that's going to be so much fun. Uh, I'll be doing interviews with new creators and old ones if I find the right network. I absolutely will be looking and we're gonna we're gonna make sure that happens. Whatever is next. I'm gonna wrap this up, not because I don't wanna keep talking, but because my phone just told me 10% battery and I don't wanna lose you guys. So thank you so freaking much. You guys mean the world to me. The last two days have been absolutely incredible. I love you guys. Thank you for joining this. 230 people were in here at one point. I am honored, I am flattered. I cannot wait to make more content with you. I cannot wait to do this with you all the time. You guys have been amazing. Thank you. Tell me what else you want in the live chat. Like, not in the live chat, in the, in the comments below. And uh, let's do this more. Let's make this a thing. Thank you again. I'll see you soon. How do I turn this off? Oh, no. See, you see, you say it feels smooth. You're closing it out. And then it starts like it began. How perfect. How fitting. I can't leave. I'm just going to. No, I can't leave. Guys, how do I internet? Is there a blooper reel on, on YouTube? Is that a thing that happens? Is that? Oh, no. Oh, no, don't give me a Remove the message? Oh, no, I don't want to remove anything. I want to leave. Um. Can you see me again? <laughs> this is absolutely a coy cry. <laughs> uh, so guys um i i am definitely <laughs> uh you know adam in the booth at collider i have always respected the hell out of that man but now i love him because i have not i've closed every app i've closed every window um i have i i use streamable to get here and now i come close it. <laughs> um i plug my phone in uh so i can at least deal with this without my battery dying um, but this is, <laughs> this is the, this is the after credit scene. Welcome to the post credit scene. Uh, I'd like to recruit you all to the Avengers. <laughs> um, so yeah, I, uh, I, this is your after credit scene. I hope you've had a good journey. I hope you, uh, I hope you've enjoyed your time in the darkness. The spinning wheel was the credits cause I am the, the person that did this and it's just me and infinity. So here we are. <laughs> So I closed my computer, which I started with. Maybe it was a, you know, connecting issue. Then I closed my phone, like closed the apps. And then I turned off my phone and turned off my computer. I have literally done all of the, the deplugging. So now I rejoined this again. I'm hoping now that I've rejoined, I can end it. Um, who knows? But I thought, hey, if you guys stuck around for the post credit scene, then I think uh, I think we should we should enjoy each other's company. We should have some time. Also, uh, you guys are like very funny. Those those comments. Uh, I was laughing while fighting and yelling and cursing at the worlds um, for this live stream not ending. Uh, but yeah, this is the first in perpetuity live stream. You see, the thing is, I need to get four thousand hours. So I thought, hey, fuck it, let's do a four thousand hour stream. <laughs> Yeah, and I, I think there is, uh, I think I, I closed the other stream successfully. Um, <laughs> the hidden track on a CD. Yes, you're my age, Meg Leahy. We remember those days. Or like all, all records, we have to like find that track. Um, what up, Argentina? Uh, I am waiting for Nick Fury to show up. Um, yeah, so I'm curious if you're just joining me in the live stream now. I have uh, I've committed to this being my life. Um, this is where we are. This is uh, this is the DVD menu of uh, what what live streams can be. Um, all right, I jumped back in. Oh, love you, three thousand Boston. Uh, I jumped back in to see if we could close it again. So this now says two and a half minutes, which means I'm just back in. Um, we are also at 77 viewers, so I apologize to all 82. Actually, you know what, let's do, 
let's do another 10 minutes. Let's do 10 minutes together. Maybe this was fate. You know, maybe we do an hour and a half today. Let's go feature length. Let's go Disney animated episode of this live stream. The very first, negative one, first episode. My name, okay, your name is Armando. Oh, that's a cool name. Armando Villarreal. That's a badass name. I respect it. Um, this is the stream that never ends. It does go on and on, my friends. I started streaming it not knowing what it was and just continued streaming it and streaming just because. Um, all right. It's my first one shot. That's true, Zach Mendoza. Uh, Robert Adams, I appreciate the chutzpah. Uh, the, the director's cut. Hey, you know what, guys? This is the John Drew cut. Everyone wanted to know the extra scenes. Everybody was curious, you know. Uh, frankly, Kiersey Clemens is here as Iris West, as she should have been. Man, I Kiersey's, she deserved that. I really, she deserved that role. She should have, I, I hope she gets to make the Flash movie. Um... Check in Twitter for a new thumbnail. Excellent. Uh, extra long episode. Totally agree. Um, stream did find a way. Is this thing still on? Scarlet Spider? It is. Scarlet Spider, also, you're the first person I saw pop up in the chat earlier. So you were the reason I knew this was working while the chaos was going on. And your name being Scarlet Spider felt ever so appropriate. So I really appreciate uh, you. Let's see. The stream is a good reputation of Koi Chaotic and Fun. I, if you read it that way, that means the world. Because, man, I've just been stressing. Also... If you're here for this post credit scene, you are probably one of the ride-or-die folk that are going to be following this whole journey, so I apologize for my anger earlier. I don't usually get mad, uh, and that person just, uh, it was, it sucked, man. I don't like people disrespecting uh, my gosh net or my friendships and shit. Like, that just wasn't cool. So, sorry I got a little hyphy. Uh, that's on me. I'll work on that for future live streams. Not my cup of tea. Usually a very happy guy, but I appreciate you guys sticking around. Uh, oh, Nick Spencer's amazing run is incredible, man. Nick Spencer is writing the hell out of Spider-Man. It feels like a Silver Age comic, but very modern at the same time. It is timeless. It is glorious. And man, I love what Otley does with his big, like, widespread pages. There's so much energy in that book. There's so much going on. Uh, you guys saw the zombie on the screen, too? Okay, I'm not, I'm not having hallucinations. <laughs> I totally saw that. Uh, am I gone again? I mean, I, uh... We're, we're going, we're going for 10 minutes. We got another five minutes. We, we ride together. We tie together. Koi crimes for life. Yo, I'm going to try to go see uh bad boys with Makuga. Cause that is, yeah. Uh, that's going to be a lifestyle choice, man. Makuga bad boys. That's going to be, that's going to be real. Uh, oh dude. The green lantern is also incredible right now. I, I'm definitely a fan. Uh, I did finish the live stream earlier, uh, Malcolm's Middle Earth Media, but unfortunately, the live stream didn't finish me earlier. The live stream said, no, 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 welcome back, and even though I turned my phone off, here we are. So I'm gonna give this till 10 minutes, I'm gonna try to stop it, and we're gonna see what happens. Um, <laughs> we're all in the John Droverse, and it is in perpetuity. You did type a sentence in all caps. This is true. Uh, my live stream, phase two. When I said earlier this was uh, year zero or uh, issue negative one, I didn't know that meant I would be restarting from the beginning and going through again. But apparently the joke landed so much the universe gave me this. Uh, I think Negasonic, uh, I totally, I don't, I, I, I feel like she loves that, that world. I don't know. Uh, well, I mean, it's way too early to tell. Like they haven't shot the movie yet. So I think that's just rumors. Uh, are you seeing my shadow? Oh, hey, it's me. Oh, also, I don't know if you guys saw this. This is a amazing advent calendar of all the Funkos, and it is 24 different little mini Funkos, and I friggin' I love, uh, I love it. I'll go through that maybe next week, because I, I do want to end this in three minutes, so I'll show you those things. Um, <laughs> I did, and it brought me right back to you. Uh, Josh Williamson's Flash, I fell off of. I, I really enjoyed the beginning of it. I like that it feels like the show. It's got that CW flavor. But um, once it got into the Speed Force in, like, after the Turtle stuff, it got a little too, I don't know, like, convoluted. From, not convoluted. It got a little too, um, it kind of stayed in the same spot. It kind of kept cycling back to its own thing. So I, I, I didn't... I didn't, I don't know. I don't know if that's, that's my cup of tea, but I mean, I'm still going to dive back in. I'm just going to give it a little time. It's not, it's not where I want it to be right now, but I'm still reading it. Uh, I watch, no, I don't watch all the CW shows. It is a Herculean task. Uh, Jay Washington watches every single one. And for that, I tip my hat. Uh, I try to catch as many as I can. I watch flash. I watch the big events, but it is literally more hours than I have in the day, but it's fantastic. Uh, dupe would be amazing in Deadpool three. And that is actually a place that would be fantastic. Um, I, I, I would love that. Uh, oh, speaking, but good series, Lois Lane, the, the Greg Rucker run is great. The art is gorgeous. It is, uh, it feels like I like had a good episode or like criminal order. What is it? law and order criminal intent? Uh, it is, it is good. It is dark. Uh, I really enjoy the mystery of it. 
Um, do do do. Unrelentless positivity. Thank you for carrying the torch, Jeff Schnapp. Can't wait for the MTS draft. Thank you so much, Taishka Productions. Thank you. That means truly the world to me. I can't wait either. Uh, I've gone handheld, so if this is a little dizzying, I apologize. I took down the tripod when I thought I was done with the live stream. Um, a live action dupe would be great, and I can actually even like hear those onomatopoeia sounds. That'd be so much fun. I could totally see that happening. Um, you fell off CW, came back. Yeah, I can see myself coming back, but it's way too many. Yeah, we literally have 100 viewers again. Um, Jimmy Olsen is one of the most inventive comics I've read in a long time. Uh, Jimmy Olsen manages to incorporate multiple storylines simultaneously per book with a very cartoonish art style while still feeling like it's in the universe of the darkest of Superman. Like, it is, it still feels like it runs alongside Bendis, but it, it isn't necessarily. And it's high stakes art. But the stories, it's just so captivating, playing with time, going back and forth, all the different Jimmy Olsons. That book is absolutely brilliant. If you haven't read Jimmy Olsen, Superman's pal Jimmy Olsen, you totally should. Um, let's see. Oh, it's frozen for A-Train. Sorry, A-Train. Um, okay. I, you know, I thought it was over too. Lays Inferno. This is our 54 coin. You know, it might be. Who knows? When we got stuck in that loop, is this me that came back? I don't know. Uh, oh, I'm glad I got your name right. That's incredible. Fantastic. All right. Uh, dude, uh, why, why'd you fall off Jimmy Olsen? Just curious. It's, it's one of my favorite books right now. Uh, okay. We got, we got another minute because I feel like 10 minutes is a nice clean number to wrap it up. Um, I have not started The Witcher. I've seen the fight. That incredible fight scene was amazing and definitely has my interest now. Uh, I haven't had time yet, but I definitely will be checking it out. Uh, the Koi Pond is back over 100 viewers. You guys are absolutely incredible. Um, Joseph Gordon-Levitt is always chasing me. That looper, he's coming. Okay, guys, we did another 10 minutes. We have over 100 viewers. I hate to say goodbye abruptly, so I'm going to give us like a, a wrap out. Um, I once again want to thank you guys for the, the love the last two days. I want to thank you for sticking around through 10 minutes of darkness, and I want to thank you for bringing the positivity I try to bring into this live chat. I want to thank you for bringing all of the you're the best comic fans in the world. You guys are great. So I really appreciate you. And I cannot wait to share more time, more attention, more of this stuff with you. Let's make a cool little comic empire together. All right. Thank you guys. Love you. Let's see if this ends.